Okay, we're well into graphing. This section is about graphing quadratics. And let's start by graphing the simplest quadratic I can think of, just y equals x squared. And you know, there's nothing embarrassing with just actually plotting points. So let me draw a little table of x values and the matching y values. Say negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 for different x values. A1 chooses integers, I guess I've just fallen into the same trap of choosing integers. But I could do a half and 1.7, I could do pi just above 3. You can plug in any numbers you like. But you know, 0, put x equals 0, 0 squared is 0. Put in 1, 1 squared is 1. Put in 2 is 4, 9. Negative 1 squared is 1 again. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared is, neg is 9. So if I graph this thing, and you know, I should do it carefully and slowly. This might be the first time you're doing this. This is 0, this is 1, and negative 1 both give 1. 2 and negative 2 both give 4. And you will see, take it slowly, follow the notes of this course very carefully, take your time, do, what, do the text following this video with pencil or paper in hand. This is just a very brief overview of what's there. So come back to this video back and forth a lot as you work through that text. But we see we get a symmetrical graph that kind of looks like a U pointing sort of upwards. All right, grand, a symmetrical U-shaped graph. Actually, what if that term is correct? If I write the letter U, oh squeaks, these parts are actually kind of vertical. Here's a nice question. Does this graph ever get completely vertical? Hmm, anyhow. Things to explore, things to think about, even at this level of the game. Now, I'm going to give you a puzzle. Here's a set of axes again. Here's me. I'm standing at position four, and I happen to be six feet tall, actually right on the nose. What I'd like is one of these U-shaped graphs to be positioned so that it's balancing perfectly on my head. Can you take this formula mess around with it in some way, and make it become a picture that's balanced on my head. This takes some doing, and I think you should just mess around with different formulas. Obviously I want the numbers 6 and 4 somehow involved to transmute this. Try different formulas, plot the points, draw tables, literally just plot the points. Never any shame in just plotting points, and see if you can make this work. Now I'm going to give away the answer in this video, and the answer is definitely given away in the text, so it's unfortunately that uh, this, this thing is sort of a online this way that you can actually see the answer coming up. But you know, if you've really got the, the self-will, pause everything, don't read anything, try to make this happen. I just need to clear this, clear the screen and then we'll move on and we'll get towards finding a U-shaped graph balancing on my head. So let me clean, clean the window. Okay, so let's take this basic formula and practice messing around with it. And if you actually tried this problem of trying to get this U-shaped curve balancing on my head, you probably tried things like y equals x squared plus 6, or something like that. And if you plot a table of values, duh, 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 x, y, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, now it'd be 0 squared plus 6, 1 squared plus 6, 2 squared plus 6, and so on, negative 1 squared plus 6. And you find pretty quickly the result is exactly what I had before, but now all these outputs are 6 higher, which means my picture I had before is actually six units higher. It's going to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph like this. And once you notice something like adding six shifts things vertically upwards, then you probably realize that subtracting six is going to bring everything down by six units, take six away from all the outputs. So here's the graph of y squared equals x squared minus six. Same thing, but everything's shifted down six units. So, you know, you learn about these vertical and horizontal shifts. Adding 6, negative 6, add 7, add negative 7, so on. It's going to shift the graph up and down. That's step number one. And you may have noticed that having a plus 6 in the formula started getting this curve to be on my head. The trouble is, how do you get things to move over? I was standing at position 4. I want this graph of heights uh, balancing at position 6 to be on my head over here at position 4 instead. And I bet if you played around with this for a while, I'll change colors now, you might have tried things like the following. Uh, y equals, say, x minus 4 squared. And if I actually draw a table of values for this, and I keep saying this, even for advanced calculus classes, there's no shame in just plotting actual points if you just want to get a feel for stuff. Uh, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, 0 is now 0 minus 4, negative 4 squared, 16. 1 is now 1 minus 3, negative 3 squared, 9. 2 is negative 2 squared, 4. 3 is negative 1 squared, 1. 
And these numbers are going to get even worse, I think. Negative 2 is a negative 6 squared, 36. Now look at this, if I went a little bit further, 4 is 0 squared, and 5 is 1 squared. x equals 4 is now behaving like 0. If I put x equals 4 into this formula, it's now behaving like the number 0 I had before. So what's that mean? If I plot these points, I can see what's happening physically with the graph. You should probably do that first. But if I can reason my way through it, this formula now has the number 4, x equals 4, behaving like 0 for the x values. So whatever the graph was doing before at x equals 0, here it is at x equals 0, that's what it's doing before, it's now doing it with the number 4 instead. If this had the dip at 0, that dip must be having, happening at 4 instead. Beautiful. And check, actually plot these points, plot this graph. Are you getting a graph that's the same U-shaped graph, but shifted over with 4 behaving like 0? Uh, my Bohr technique is going to be lousy, but if I squeeze another example here, like y equals, say, x plus 5 squared into this, I'm going to ask myself, what number is behaving like 0 for the x values? Well, negative 5 is behaving like 0. Put in x equals negative 5, I'm going to get 0 squared. So whatever was going on at 0 before, in this formula, is now happening at negative 5 in this formula. Okay, negative 5 was over here. Before, it was doing the dip at 0. Since negative 5 is now behaving like 0, it must be doing the dip at negative 5. Beautiful. Ah, now I bet you can see how to get this U-shaped graph balancing on the top of my head. So read the text. This went through very, very fast. The idea is to give an overview in this video, but your job is actually work through the text, following this video very slowly, pencil or paper in hand, do the practice exercises, check your answers and all that sort of stuff, and you get to a point you really feel like you know what's going on. Maybe review this video again at the end and say, oh, what this guy was talking about at the beginning made no sense, but now it's all clear. See how this all fits together, and I bet you can get that, that, that U-shaped graph be balancing on my head as I gave at the very beginning of, the, of this video, previous video, sorry. All right, lots of fun. Cool stuff, go for it, works this slowly, this all makes good sense, thanks.